there is a very simple resolution to the Fermi paradox from the anthropic principle. And I haven't heard anyone else reference this argument. Uh, I think it works quite well, and it has nothing to do with the probability estimates we give to the emergence of advanced life. The basic problem in the Fermi paradox is why don't we see advanced life in space if there are so many stars and planets and places where advanced life could evolve? We know it evolved here, so it's possible. So why don't we see it anywhere else? People always want to go to the Drake equation and probability estimates regarding the emergence of advanced life. And people will say that, well, actually, maybe the emergence of life in the first place is very unusual. Only one in 10,000 galaxies ever gets any life. Or maybe the uh, threshold, the kind of bottleneck, is still ahead of us. And it's very unlikely that any civilization survives itself. None of that matters. That is not relevant to the solution to the paradox. No matter how likely advanced life is in absolute terms, whether it's 1 in 10,000 galaxies that has it or 9,000 in 10,000 galaxies, we wouldn't expect to find ourselves in a galaxy that already has advanced interstellar life. The galaxy is very, very old, right? Billions of years old. How long would an interstellar civilization take to colonize an entire galaxy? Think about the von Neumann probes. This is what's referenced in 2001 A Space Odyssey as the big black obelisk. The idea of the von Neumann probe is if you have a probe that goes out and replicates itself, then now you have two probes that can go out and replicate themselves, which, you know, quickly expands into millions and billions of probes in a very short order. And so uh, the, the galaxy, according to von Neumann, could be completely explored by such probes in the span of 50,000, 100,000 years. So it would not take that long for an emerging interstellar life form to occupy every planet in the galaxy. So we, as nascent intelligent life, would not expect to find ourselves in a galaxy that already has intelligent life, interstellar intelligent life, because then there would be no room for us. If our galaxy, at some point in its history, already evolved in interstellar civilization, that civilization would have strip-mined Earth or colonized it millions of years ago. That's the answer, in a nutshell. It's similar to the question of, like, why do we find ourselves on a planet with liquid water when there's so little liquid water out there? If liquid water is here, why don't we see it in space? Because we could only find ourselves in a place with liquid water. That's the anthropic principle. Why do we find ourselves in a galaxy without life? Because we could only find ourselves in a galaxy without other interstellar life forms. There would be no room for us. So it doesn't matter how probable or improbable it is in absolute terms. It matters that we couldn't survive interstellar neighbors. Um, aliens would not be like uh, Star Trek Federation aliens with the prime directive, they would be an evolutionary system, and the behavior of evolutionary systems is relatively predictable. They spread into all available territories, consume all available energetic resources. That's just what life does. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and thank you guys for listening.